and we're back. Mike Sims, we're the mindset. Stop this to follow mindset. This Monday, this Monday, about 800 of Trump's most dedicated supporters are going to be out of a job. So for those of you who don't know, and those of you who didn't read my medium.com article, there are a bunch of employees who are what are called Schedule C employees. They're temporary employees, okay? They're also called beachhead employees. The idea is you can get your people in temporary, and then they have to be made permanent. They are on 120-day terms, and then once you got the term, it is over. So right now, we're just going to kind of hold a brainstorming session, which is what can we do to stop De Stefano, who's trying to do it? Now, in my possession, in my possession is the email address of every current Schedule 3 employee. In my right. possession. Hold on a second. In my possession. It Let's mute that. We got a little, a little background noise. No big deal. It happens. Well, we'll mute that. So, yeah, in my possession, I have every email of every Schedule C employee, and I've just sent out a massive email blast to 800 people. So what can we do to stop Dave Stefano? Well, email. Reply to my email. If you are a temporary employee and you're going to be gone on Monday or Tuesday, get in touch. Get in touch. Right? Hit me up. I replied with an email, and I replied with a with the Google form, actually, that you can respond to anonymously. You can respond on the record. You can respond however you want to respond, but you got to respond. You're gone. Monday or Tuesday, 800 people, essentially, are going to be fired from their jobs within the Trump administration, right? So right now, it's just a, kind of a brainstorming session. What can we do to stop this, right? Because personnel, personnel is policy. And if they're gone, the never Trumpers are going to come in. Now, I'm going to address a criticism that we've been hearing, which, by the way, is a legitimate criticism. A lot of people are saying, Cernovich, you don't want Trump hiring people only because they were loyal to Trump. Well, one, that is a quite a naive, quite a naive position because Obama hired people who were loyal to him. Hillary Clinton would hire people loyal to her. But in our world, we hold ourselves to higher standards than we hold everybody else to, which is why we lose. They can't get interns in. That is how bad it is. So maybe a lot of you would say, you know what? We can't just hire people because they were loyal to Trump. You have to hire the best people, whatever that means. I have talked to people who go, oh, yeah, you can't. we can't even get our interns in. These are people who manage field offices in Pennsylvania battleground states, Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, field directors, high-level people, they go, no, 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 the only way to get our interns in are never Trump people. So you can't even get an intern in who supported Trump. They have completely taken over personnel. They have completely, Johnny Stefano. I don't know whose idea it was to hire him. I don't know who wanted to hire Johnny Stefano or why. But Johnny De Stefano, that none of us never heard of, none of us ever heard of Johnny De Stefano. Isn't that interesting? It's interesting how all these people that none of us heard of, because they didn't actually do anything to help Trump win, those are the people in charge of policy and personnel. Those are the people who are responsible for getting people hired. Peter Thiel cannot get his people in. Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel has been in D.C. all week having meetings with uh, the Trump people saying, how can Peter Thiel and I get his people in? Right? That's where we're at. So if you supported Trump on Monday or Tuesday, you're going to be out of a job. The Schedule C employees on Monday or Tuesday are going to be out of a job. Bye-bye. Who is going to get those jobs after they all leave? Never Trumpers. Never Trumpers are going to get all those jobs the minute those 800 people who actually got Trump elected are gone, 
that never Trumpers are going to take over and never Trumpers are going to be in charge. And that's the end of it. Well, that's the end of the Trump revolution. I don't know. You, you can't get anything done. You can't get anything done if you don't have the right people. So come Monday, a lot of people who moved all the way across the country are not going to have jobs. A lot of people who tried to help Trump win, who are loyal to Trump, they're just not going to have jobs. End of story. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for your help getting me elected. But you got to go home because we want to hire never Trump people. That's just the way it is, guys. And it really does kind of say it all. Um, you know, a lot of people are saying, how is Trump letting this happen, myself included? I would. How come I know this is happening and Trump isn't doing anything about it? Rents previous, maybe he delegated it too much. Trump has constantly said in all of his books, Trump has said in all of his books, hire the best people and delegate responsibility to them. Hire the best people and delegate them. So he hired Rents Priebus and delegated all this power to him, and all Rents Priebus gave him Sean Spicer. Rents Priebus gave him Johnny DeStefano. That's who's running things. That is who you have to get. If you want to work in the Trump administration, my source is multiple. I've talked to over 31 people now. I've heard from everybody at all level, everybody from the secretaries. I'm talking the highest level of people. I've heard from everybody, the highest level of people, to enter in Africa. That if you supported Trump, you just can't get in. It's the way it is. And we'll come Monday or come Tuesday. If you're out of a job, fine. Thanks for the help. Thanks for relocating to D.C. Thank you for subletting a house. Thank you for moving. You know, real appreciate it. Bye. See you later. Another thing that's happening in personnel. They are paying Trump supporters less than they're paying Hillary supporters. There's a government pay standard. It's called GS, and you're ranked, you know, GS 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So Trump supporters, even when they can get hired, are not being paid at the rate they deserve. So they're actually being underpaid relative to their qualifications. And set, you tell me, people are going, what the GS is set? Go ahead, tell me. This is what is going on. This is what is happening under Trump's nose. So if you're a Trump supporter, you probably can't get hired. But if you do get hired, then you're not going to get paid at the same rate that you would be if Hillary had won and hired a Hillary supporter. Oh, it gets worse. Oh, it gets worse. Before Obama left, a bunch of positions, so there's a difference between political appointee and civilian appointee, appointees, right? So before Obama left, they reclassified a bunch of jobs that Trump should have been able to fill. They reclassified them as civil servant. So what they did before Trump left is, they took thousands of positions that Trump would have been entitled to fill. They reclassified them as civil servant positions. They moved their political appointees into their civil service positions. And now the civil service positions have lifetime tenure, essentially, with union protection. My, it's a disaster. The personnel is uh, it's a disaster in this because of Johnny DeStefano. And so, for, so are you following along at home? By the way, this is really boring stuff to me. I was falling asleep until I realized how important it was, right? So trust me. If you're falling asleep and you think you're, this is boring, trust me. It seemed boring to me too, but this is actually more important than Susan Rice's story. This is the most important uh, journalism that I've done all year. This is way more important because if you don't get Trump's people in, thank you for the super chat my name is, appreciate it. If you don't get Trump's people in, what are you going to do? You can't do anything. So let's go back again. Johnny DeStefano, on Monday or Tuesday, is sending the walking papers to 800 Trump supporters. So come Monday or Tuesday, they're going to say, hey, thanks. Thanks for driving out here. You got to go. Here, thank you. Glad you helped Trump win. But you know what? You have to leave. Here's your walking paper. Sign it. HR. Sign it with HR. Here you go. Sign it. You got to go because we're going to hire never Trumpers. So who's president? Trump or is De Stefano president? Who is really in charge? Trump or Rents Priebus? Who is really in charge? Trump or Sean Spicer? Who is really in charge? Trump or McMaster? 
I'm not really seeing President Trump as being in charge of much of anything. If you ask me, my uh, candid criticism as a journalist, I don't. Is Trump really in charge of anything? Because if 800 of his supporters are gone this Monday, boy, he's not doing anything. He's not doing anything. Right? So what is really going on? What is really going on? I don't know, man. You guys tell me. Dave Stefano is in charge of personnel. Come Monday, come Tuesday, they're not going to get – they're not going to get it. They're definitely not going to get it, and I want to know why. I want to know who's in charge, Donald Trump or Johnny Day Stefano. Why is Johnny Day Stefano – so I sent an email out to hate our 800 people. 800 people, request for comment. Here's the email I sent. I have the list of every schedule. Don't ask me how I got it. I got sources. I have the email address of every Schedule C employee. So I send an email out. Hi, I'm writing a story about personnel policies in the Trump administration, and in particular how the Director of Presidential Personnel, Johnny De Stefano, is handling personnel and staffing. It has come to my attention that as few as 15% of Schedule C employees will be given permanent positions. Over 30 people have expressed their concerns to me. It's 31 for those of you who wonder the exact number. They don't know if they will have a job next week. The mainstream media hasn't reported on this development, which should be huge. And some believe this is because De Stefano is deliberately stalling the hiring process in order to favor never Trumpers. We want to figure out what is happening for my upcoming story and hiring within the Trump administration. You may offer your comments anonymously via the Google form or talk to me on email and signal. So we're waiting, you know, I've been in touch. 800 people have an email from me. If they are, you know, too afraid to rock the boat, if they're too afraid to rock your boat, don't know, don't know. But I would like to know. So if you're a Schedule C employee and, you know, you got the email, I sent out 800 emails to people. So if people are not – if people are out of work Monday or Tuesday, I don't know what to tell you. I can only do what I can do. I can only blow the whistle on this Johnny Stefano guy. I can only email 800 people, and people already send me nasty replies. How do you have my email? You get nasty emails from people. How do you have my email? I don't know, buddy. How about you're not going to have a job on Monday, and we do something about it. Maybe, you know, if you're too afraid to stand up against Stefano. Maybe I don't want you in the Trump administration anyway, big baby. We're out here. We're out here trying to stop a coup. People are wondering how I got emails. Don't worry about it. I got a lot of things. I know a lot of things. That's just what I'll say. I know way more than people think I know. If you think I, you know, if you think I know a little bit, wait until you see what I really know. So there are other people saying there's background check issues. There's a lot of background check issues. They're delaying your background check, too. So if you were a pro-Trumper, pro-Trump person, they won't clear your background check, right? So you can't get a background check cleared. If you get hired, you're not going to get paid at the same rate as everybody else. And if you do get paid temporary, you won't be permanent, even if you flew across the country. And you can't get your interns in because of Johnny De Stefano. Because of Johnny De Stefano is not letting anybody in. I, you know, one guy goes, Some of your facts are wrong. Not all Schedule C appointments are 120 days. Well, a lot of them are, though, buddy. I've talked to over 31 people. Don't try to correct me when I'm talking to people who are off work Monday or Tuesday. Right? If people have not been given full time jobs, there could be a serious reason for it. They can have failed a background check or may not be qualified for the job. I don't know how you found me, but I'm a never Trump Republican. Interesting. Well, how did I find you? I don't know. How do I find people? Why do I know so much? I don't know. Why do I know so much? And how much do I really know versus how much do I let on? The real question is, 
do I know way more than I actually let on, right? So that's the question. But this is the never Trump position is they may have failed a background check or may not be qualified for the job. Well, the background checks aren't being approved. That's the issue. The background checks are being delayed, so they're not, they're not doing them. So that's their official story. Oh, you know, background checks take a lot of time. No, they're deliberately delaying them so that the appointments can expire. Dude, what's the news? You're blocked, bro. You're blocked. What's the news? If you can't understand why this is important, then I don't know what to tell you. If you can't understand when a bunch of Trump people are going to lose their jobs on Monday, on Tuesday, why that's important, and then never Trumpers are going to take those jobs. I would, you know, if you don't know why that's newsworthy, then I just don't really want you watching my stuff. You just got to leave because you're not ready. You're not ready for the level that we're at because the never Trumpers have taken over this week. So what will happen is a bunch of pro-Trump people are going to be out. They're going to be out this Monday or Tuesday. And then... What's going to happen? The never Trumpers are going to come in. So again, it all comes back to, I love how people are saying, well, maybe they're just not qualified, right? That's what a lot of people are saying. Well, maybe they're just not qualified. Maybe they're not. Well, Peter Thiel's people aren't getting in, all right? So your whole line of, the whole line that, well, maybe they're not qualified or whatever. Yeah, dude, I, th I think Peter Thiel knows who are qualified people. I think that we can all agree that Peter Thiel knows more about who should work in the White House than the never Trump Republicans do. I think if I was like, hey, who's a good person to hire? I can ask Peter Thiel or I can ask anybody else. I would say probably Peter Thiel would know a thing or two about hiring people. And that is what I love. So Peter Thiel's people can't even get in. I mean, think about, think about this for a minute. Just think about this for a minute. Peter Thiel a billionaire serial entrepreneur who spoke at the RNC and laid his reputation on the line to support Trump. He can't get anybody hired. Do you not understand what a disaster this is? Okay. This isn't Mike. Maybe you think Mike Cernovich is a wild man and I don't know who should work. And maybe you think, okay, fine. You can think whatever you want to think about me. Fact check this though. Smart guys. Fact check this. Is Peter Thiel in Washington, D.C. this week? Fact check it. Is Peter Thiel in Washington, D.C. in this week? And is he raising holy hell because his people can't get in? And if you're saying Thiel's not in town in D.C., then you're an idiot. You have to leave because you don't even have background facts. You're not even the realm of argument because you can't make an argument until you have facts, until you have a factual basis. Teal's in town raising holy hell. Because he's so this isn't the case where Mike Cernovich is at home and he's upset because he can't get his people in. Right? This isn't, oh man, I recommended people. They're not. No, no, no. Peter Teal can't get his people in. So go ahead and explain to me why Peter Teal's people aren't getting hired. I would be thrilled. I would be thrilled to hear anybody's explanation for that. Go ahead and let me know why Peter Thiel's people can't get in. All right, I'm going to FaceTime if I can. I don't know. Can I FaceTime while I'm doing this? No, let's, we just want to do FaceTime audio. Hold on. I'm going to call Jeff. I'm going to see what Jeff's up to. Let's get Jeff on here. It's a dire situation, guys. This is bad. Bad. Even Peter Thiel can't get in. That's bad. Hola, Jeff. Hey, man, what's up? You're live, dude. We're just we're trying to figure out how bad things are and what your take on it is and what your insights might be. Is Tyra around? No, we can cuss now. She's not home, so it's not it doesn't have to be family friendly anymore. Well, good then. Bullshit. I yeah. mean, try, <laughs> I have a cocktail here. So, yeah, Excellent. Go, so, so forgive me here, but um, yeah, I'm just really. Hold on a second. I'm just gonna close this window here we go yeah i mean um i mean trump won the election but he lost the administration and right. now where we are is how can he get the administration back and 
he should be purging the never Trumpers and, and, and rethinking his personnel policy. And instead, he's allegedly considering people like Lieberman. Like, what's up with that? Yeah, I forgot to even mention Lieberman. I'm so focused on the Schedule 3 issue, and I'm, I'm reading the survey, and one of the comments that we got, and by the way, every comment we get, these are people currently in the administration. This forum is not public knowledge, so there's no trolls. Here's what I'm just reading right now. Everyone in my department is working actively to undermine Trump. They laugh about going to war with him. I'm reading this right now, people. Everyone in my department is working actively to undermine Trump. They laugh about going to war with him. That's how important personnel is. This is what they're talking about, guys. Yeah, I mean, you guys have probably heard the expression personnel is policy, and now we're living. I mean, we're seeing that big time. And it's either a gross incompetence on the part of Trump himself or sabotage or a combination of both. I mean, I have to say I'm, I'm really not impressed. For, for the guy who ran The Apprentice, he sure has sucked at picking his own personnel. Yeah, I mean, I told people, you know, I told people the other day that I, you know, I don't, I'm pro-Trump, but I'm not Trump stooge. I'm going to say what is ever on my mind because if Trump ruins this country, I have to live here. I'm reading another survey reply, never Trumpers and Dems have a better chance of getting hired than Trump supporters. I mean, that's what I'm hearing from people who, are, again, are actually actively in the administration, that if you're a Trump supporter, you're going to be kept out. So what are you hearing? Well, I mean, did you see the article yesterday? I think it was in Breitbart about how Trump met with Jack Welch. Jack Welch, the renowned CEO, former CEO of General Electric, and kind of business superstar. And Jack Welch said that he, he would grade Trump a D minus, and that's generous. So even Jack Welch is coming out and saying, look, you're not, you know, you're not executing that well. You need to, you need to get your act together or get out. You know, you, know, you really need to, sh to shape things up. And Welch pointed out, you know, Trump, you're a brilliant business guy. You've, you've run family businesses really well. You're probably not used to the sabotage that happens in large bureaucracies. And what you've got to do is you've got to go find it and root it out of the source aggressively. And um, so even Jack Welsh is, is advising what, what we're advising, which is for Trump to be more aggressive on purging the, uh, the bad elements in his administration, in the executive branch, of course. Yeah, I mean, you make, you make a good point, which is that in, uh, in, in Trump's world, Hey man, you get paid bonuses, compensation, your family there, they want to make money, you know, everything, you know, everything else. And that's the big, that's the big issue is what is really, you know, what is really going on? You know, that's the big issue. What the heck, what the heck is really going on? And, you know, people, people don't know, dude, people don't know that they don't understand. And we're seeing the impact of not institutionalizing. I mean, I know, I mean, I love this kind of movement for being free flowing and autonomous and individualistic and all that. But let's be honest, we got, we got outflanked during the transition. I mean, heritage totally dominated the transition process. Why? Because there aren't big budget organizations in town that have policy papers and people in waiting that are kind of Trumpists. And again, I know that sounds like lame, wonky Washington stuff, but it actually really makes a huge difference when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, winning the actual, winning the administration and, and issues like personnel policy. I mean, this is kind of a joke. Yeah, we're getting killed. We got outflanked big time in the transition. And uh, again, what I what I was telling people earlier, I don't know if you were you were live, but I can understand if because I personally didn't recommend people for jobs. So this isn't me ranting that I can't get my people in, and oh my god, I'm such a crybaby. And no, 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 Peter Thiel can't get his people in. That's where we're at. That's how bad we're being outflanked by Never Trump, where Peter Thiel can't get his people in. And I don't I don't know who better than Peter Thiel to decide who would be qualified for these kind of jobs. Yeah, I mean, and I'll share with you in your, your community, Barry, like, you know, I quietly helped build databases of people who met two criteria. One, really talented people who could really 
wanted to serve the country and make it, you know, make it better. And then two, were Trump loyalists and had been a supporter from the start, i.e. they were not never Trump types of people. And we found a lot of those people and built, you know, built a pretty good database and filtered through tons of people. And I can tell you, it feels like a lot of that, I mean, I don't expect, you know, to be heard on every little issue, but, but, um, but finding people who are both extremely competent, experienced, and Trump supporters it isn't that easy. And we found all these people and, and the Trump administration hasn't put to use that many of them. And so, so it's not that there aren't these people out there or that people didn't do the homework in advance. They did. A lot of people did the homework. A lot of people stepped up and said, hey, I want to serve. I've been a Trump loyalist and I'm talented, et cetera, et cetera. Something on the inside has just really been messed up, and it's it's really frustrating. Yeah, I mean, just as an example, I so I never recommended anybody, but now that you mention it, I did mention there was a candidate who he worked in a very prestigious think tank, well educated, very well planned. And he wanted to work in a specific department, and he had asked me if I would maybe forward his resume or whatever. And I'm not going to say who it is, but this person was like a caliber candidate. And he never even heard back. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I think it's time to take the gloves off and really be critical of Trump on this issue. And I think, you know, I think Trump is getting beat up all over the place. And, and he, you know, what does he have to lose by, you know, the people who he has the right to appoint to make sure that they, they're they aligned with his policies? That seems like common sense. And it's time for him to take the bull by the horns and make sure that he has people who are loyal to him and his vision and talent at the same time. And I don't know why he's, he's so, he, he appears to me to be so kind of weak and half hearted about it. Yeah. I think what I think happened is that he went in there, you know, 70 years old, your old habits die hard. You go into a, you go into the office and you think, okay, people here are going to want to do great things. Let's hire great people. Let yada, yada. So he brings in Rex Priebus and they immediately sabotage him. They bring in DeStefano. Because I don't think Trump got the game. Because I'll admit, I didn't either. When I started hearing about this clamor, I've known about these personnel issues for a month or two, and I just thought it was like kind of boring. I didn't really care. didn't want to talk about it. And then finally, I basically had somebody I respect say, hey, just shut up for a few minutes and let me tell you what was going on. And then once I heard that this Monday or Tuesday there could be 800 people out of a job, that's when I appreciated how bad things are and how bad things are gotten. Because once those people are gone, it's going to be Washington insiders, GOP insiders who get those positions. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is how the, I mean, I live in Washington, as you know, and, and this is how the sausage is made. And there are all these people who know how the sausage is made and who played that game through the transition. And, and we're seeing the consequences of this. So I think, you know, as a practical matter, I think one, you, know, you frame this as a brainstorming session. I think it'd be really interesting to see what your audience thinks would be constructive things to do to help bring down the pressure. And personally, Mike, I'm curious what you think about the nepotism factor. I mean, Jared and Ivanka, I have very mixed feelings about it, and I'm generally uncomfortable to be, to be very blunt. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I don't have any mixed feelings at all, but there's... It isn't a family good. Yeah, it's not a family business where everybody you want to bring your family in because you can't trust anybody else with money. That's the family business mindset. This is about you need to bring people in who understand the game and who are willing to be complete and total savages where need be. And Ivanka and Jared, they don't get that game at all. So yeah, for me, there's no mixed feelings. I don't. I didn't see them at rallies. People didn't vote for them. People weren't chanting their names and. If Trump wants to keep them close, hey, he can do whatever he wants to do. But they've been consistently outflanked by this. These are the kind of things that got, you know, Paul Manafort would have spotted. You know, as much trouble as Paul Manafort maybe have, has caused and gotten trouble, this is why you needed a Paul Manafort type who's going to come in and say, no, actually, here's what happened. So uh, another thing that happened, too, is before, before Trump became president, Obama switched over – thousands of positions that were political appointees and he made them they reclassified them as civilian and civil service and then they took their political employees and they put them into civil service 
And now your civil service, you have bureaucracy, you have unionization. The civil service people are sabotaging Trump at every at every field too. And again, he didn't realize this was happening. These are the kind of these are the reasons you need a Roger Stone or somebody or a Paul Manafort, who I guess is a little bit too a little bit too heat too, too much heat right now. But you need somebody like that who understands the bureaucracy and can tell you who's going to knife you in the back. Right. Um, so so let's. I mean, that's a good segue. I mean, I'm curious, in your opinion, Mike, like what would be, and maybe for your listeners, like what would be the top three which items on your wish list for Trump's to, Trump to make? I mean, is one of them bringing on board a, a Manafort or, or something, somebody like that who's more who can aggress, more aggressively go after these? What would be your top three? wish list uh, on your wish list for him to do there yeah he's got to bring in a hatchet man into every department and fire the people he can fire and get rid of the holdovers that he can get hold, held over and they need to just bring in a massive influx of people and they need to realize where this at because i've been able to figure out after talking to over 31 people about this stuff by the way so earlier i was worried my email didn't go through but it has gone through to all 800 people because i'm getting some nasty emails and who the hell are you and who are you? So that's good, you know. I, I if if I don't have yeah, if I don't have at least a couple of people sending me a who the hell are you, how'd you get my email thing, then I was afraid that the email wasn't getting sent. So it is good. All eight hundred employees, Schedule C, that I emailed either have the email or they will have it soon. And some of them want to know how I know so much, but you know what? It's nobody's business. That's just the nature of you know being a great journalist. So yeah, they need to know. They need to know. So then here's another guy says, I admire your work. If you don't mind, I'd like to know how my contact info is located. I can't tell you that, my friend. So it's good. The email, the replies are coming in. Good. I was, so those of you watching at home, actually, I was concerned. I was concerned that, you know, some of the messages that, it, that they weren't getting through, but they actually are. So this is good. You know, if people want to have jobs Monday, Tuesday, and they really want to do something, they have the opportunity. I've done all I can do. So I think I guess so. If Trump were in this room right now, what three actions would we recommend you take? I mean, for me, one would be fire to stop the Stefano. Yeah, because that seems like a real issue. Two is bring in the hatchet person, like you said, who can more aggressive, who really owns this issue and can more aggressively uh, manage it. And then a third one. What would be? I guess a third one would be to. I mean, I kind of like. I have to say, I like how Trump is like not, not going to fill every position, you know, because there are too many government jobs. So I kind of like that about. Him. Mm -hmm. But I think he should more aggressively. There is a lot of really good talent out there. So at least like the first, bring in one aggressively, bring in one wave of, of kind of fresh blood that's loyal and, and vetted and so forth into the administration. So I have a question for you. I read an article way back in January that there was something called a plum book that was made available for, for Trump, and it was essentially people who were pro-Trump but were also highly qualified. Was that a real news story? And if so, what, what happened with that? Well, uh, the plum book has is, is been around for years. So that's, that's kind of an institution in Washington, as I understand it. That's the book that just lists all of the appointments. Is that yeah, but I read I read an article that there was a book though that was actually a database of Trump people who are qualified, and I was wondering, oh, yeah, if that yeah, was you true. Mean the plum, you mean the plum list? The plum list, right? Right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I can't comment on that. Okay, but um, would it be fair to say though that I, I was reading a report that hundreds of people were recommended? Would it be fair to say that um, most people who are qualified? Weren't, weren't getting hired by Trump and the administration? Would that be fair characterization? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I think there was a lot of swirl and a lot of people with connections close up to the administration, so not just random people, put a lot of work into building different lists and databases of highly qualified people, in many, case, in many cases precision targeted for specific roles. And look, you don't expect the administration to listen to every single one or whatever, but um, but I was just shocked how, how you know how how little that difference that that how little they seemed to, to listen in the end and get placed. And clearly, we were outflanked by other forces in the transition, and that's the real story, in my opinion. And now Trump needs to now that that's become 
somewhat apparent, he needs to fix the situation. Yeah, so I would definitely, I agree with you. I would, here's what I would do. Number one is I would, I believe these 120 day terms can be extended for another 120 days. There, I would have to double check, but I believe you can extend the term. So number one would be, I would just extend the term of every Schedule C employee. Priority one, you can do that with the flip of a switch. Extend every Schedule C position, 120 days. Two would be fire day Stefano. And then three would be to bring in an operator. Again, get me Roger Stone kind of type. I don't know that Roger Stone is the person for it, but get me, you know, get me somebody like that. Get me somebody who will just go in and do what has to be done and not really care about if people like him or people get angry. And I'm not sure who would do that, but we, that would be what I would do for sure. Yeah, those are, <clears throat> those are good. You also mentioned something earlier about the security clearances, which I guess until recently I never thought about that as a point of political leverage, but it right. really is. And I'm wondering, how do you think, what do you, how can we make, because nobody wants that to be a political, it shouldn't be political, right? Right, exactly. How can Trump make sure that uh, security clearances aren't being politicized? Yeah, that's harder because you... So there have been multiple people who worked at NSC who had their clearances pulled and they were reassigned because McMaster wanted to get rid of them. And then there are multiple people now who can't get jobs and they're afraid to say anything. So one person I talked to who was a Schedule C employee, and then he finally was made permanent, had told me it's the, the civil servant people have told them, if you Trump people throw a fit, then you're going to be the Maytag man. And I was like, oh, okay. So the Maytag man means you have a job, but you can't do anything because you have a clearance. So that's another way they're messing with people. It's called it's called Maytagging them. So for those of younger people, you know, there was a commercial called the Maytag man, and the the pitch was that the Maytag washing machines are so great that the repairman has got such a boring job because he sits around all day. So that's the kind of the expression is they'll Maytag you. So even if you get a permanent position, you can't actually do any work because they won't approve your security clearance. So that's another way that they are messing with you and politicizing it. As far as that goes, I don't have enough granular knowledge of how the security clearance process works, but I would assign more people to process applications, and I would make that another priority too. So just to put this in perspective, Donald Trump has 20% of the personnel that Bill Clinton had at this time and is the administration. 20%. So even if you believe in limited government, as I do, and you don't want to have a big bloated government, my God, right? Trump has only one fifth of the people and personnel that Bill Clinton had. That's bad. Yeah, I don't, you, know, I don't, you don't have to have 80%, but you should at least have half. That, that's how yeah, bad things are. It's crazy. And I was researching, I mean, and even worse is that the entire Obama administration works for various David Brock organizations and hacks. Right. So these people who are in the Obama administration are now in these different organizations actively working to delegitimize the president. I mean, put that in perspective. We have an entire well-funded political operation aimed at delegitimizing a sitting president. I mean, you know, it's maybe they should focus on, you know, building a, a, a better vision and fixing their own problems, you know, going after and delegitimizing a sitting president, it, it seems not, not quite treasonous, but yeah, kind of almost there in my eyes. Yeah. I mean, that's another, that's another way that we're being outflanked is in terms of the money spent. So, I mean, the way I feel, man, is we're completely surrounded. The, um, the, the media, we got the media on one end, we got the David Brock, correct the people, correct the people on the other end, and then on the other end, we have the personnel box being set in. We're almost completely boxed in, and a lot of people commented, actually, that Trump didn't seem himself today.